Hello, my name is Nathan Laird. I'm a senior research analyst in Morgan's research team. It's my pleasure today to have here with me Mick McCormack, the CEO and MD of APA Group. APA Group is the largest gas pipeline owner and operator in Australia. One of the sort of really interesting questions at the moment, we're seeing gas prices that have probably doubled or more over time. We're seeing electricity prices that are absolutely on a, on a bull market sort of phase. Um, South Australian uh, events that we're all reading about in the papers gas shortages, etc. Sort of interested in your views on that and how uh, APA is positioned to um, sort of, I suppose, over time maybe take advantage of that. Yeah, well, we've um, got a uh, renewables business. We, we own some wind farms. We're developing a wind farm as we speak. Um, we also have a, a solar farm uh, we're, we're developing, so we're certainly in the renewables business. Look, as to the issues around uh, the energy market and gas uh, in particular um, currently, um, you know, I often say I'm, I'm only surprised that people are surprised we've got to today. Um, it's really a, a combination of um, poor policy settings at state and federal level. You've got um, over the last six or eight, ten years, you've had various states set renewable energy targets um, completely in isolation to what um, those targets mean to the national market. Um, and of course, the answer is simple. Uh, there should be one renewable energy target for the nation, and that should be wrapped up. Uh, under a federal uh, government policy uh, to enable that and as to um, getting to a cleaner energy future that's always been the target and um, that's where gas um, has always been seen as the fuel of transition so and that's the point you know we're facing a transition right now and unfortunately the transition has been a bit steep um, there's been too much uh, focus on renewables um, at the cost of, of affordability and reliability so, um, again, it's like the answer is pretty simple. If our political leaders can agree on uh, a national energy policy with a single target and on the way through explain to the mums and dads that if uh, we want to transition to whatever the kind of nuclear, whatever it's going to be, um, let's do it over 20 years or 30 years or 10 years. And if, depending on what that time is, this is going to be the impact on costs and reliability um, and, and how clean the energy is. So, but up to date, we just had a singular focus on um, getting clean energy at the expense of reliability and affordability, and we're, we're paying a price. Um, and a very, it's a serious um, issue, Nathan. I've recently come back from overseas, and um, Australia's sort of laughed at, as in, you know, you're a first world country, and yet the whole state gets blacked out for a week. I mean, it's just laughable. Um, but anyway, you know, we are where we are. Yeah. So, Mika, are you, are you worried about sort of demand destruction coming through because of these high prices? Um, Look, um, absolutely. Uh, APA, uh, you know, one of its strengths, we're a long-term business, so um, our revenue comes into us typically under long-term contracts. So in the short term, we're not too concerned about price, um, you know, variability. But obviously, um, in the medium to longer term, um, very concerned about um, price increasing because it means that um, a customer today might, when they come up for a, um, uh, a contract comes up for renewal uh, at a higher price, rather than contract for 100 units, they might contract for 50. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's um, absolutely we're concerned about it. And, um, but fortunately, it's a, it's a more of a, a medium, longer term issue for us. Um, but yeah, it, it's, um, you know, the, the answer is getting access to more gas. Over the long run, uh, APA has consistently said that you know its investment sort of discipline is around not investing capital unless you've got a, a long run take or pay contract or a regulatory regime yeah. that sort of underwrites your your investment. You, you've put out there that you're targeting a, a 1.5 billion dollar investment pipeline over the next three years. Maybe if you could just sort of talk us through the elements of that and which parts of the country you're seeing maybe where those investments yeah. are. Invested. We came out with that. Um I wouldn't say it was a forecast. I mean, it, it, it had some opportunities that we'd qu quantified. Um, that was at the uh, full year results last year, and that was only in response to the market. The market um, uh, had been saying to us, APA, you consistently talk about you, you've got growth opportunities, but up and downstream of the business, you know, Rio BHP, for example, upstream, they've cut back their capital spend downstream, you, you, you know, the origin of Sandos, they've cut down their capital spend, so how can you possibly talk about capital, you know? So all we did then was just, so there's, 
Um, there is about $1.5 billion of projects that we're in active discussion with our customers about and, and they're exclusive to us if they happen. APA gets to do them, if they don't, they don't, have, they don't no one gets to do them. And the time frame um, is, that's the next three years. Um, and I've, yeah, so 700 million was uh, in the pipeline business, um, but 500 was in the renewables. Um, and 300 was in um, midstream, and um, we're well on the way um, in the last eight months or so to achieving that. We'll give it, we'll make it a, give it a fair stretch. Um, even on just the renewables business, the projects we've announced probably gets us to the 500 already. Yeah, we're pretty or pretty close to it. But no, it's just really a um, in response to the market. Saying they're all around you, the people are cutting back on their capex, which again is a point with, with APA. Um, we can only respond to what our customers want, and and it's a you know it's a longish term um, proposition. We tend to lag the market, so yeah. when the iron ore price crashed, we were still putting in compressors for the BHP and Rio over in WA. Um, iron ore price starts to get on the up again, and they'll start they start talking to us about expansions. Yeah. And the, um, the risk return profile for these, these investments, is it different to what the you know, investors in your stock are used to seeing previously? Um, no, the, um, it's been, been consistent um, for us. Um, I will acknowledge that some of the um, acquisition opportunities um, um, APA have, has pursued and we've been unsuccessful for that reason. Yeah. Um, we've simply been outbid. Um, you know, so obviously the winners have got different different views on on risk reward there, um, but that's a you know that's just the way the way the infra infrastructure market is right now. Yeah. And, and having said that, I do uh, sense a bit of a change um, with uh, U.S. interest rates bumping up. Um, I think that'll um, rejig the investor appetite for for um, sort of yield style um, infrastructure assets, as in the valuations might. I think we've seen the the, 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 the top of the, the valuation and get on the they'll come back to more recent levels. I'm glad you actually mentioned that mix. So we've obviously seen the uh, well it looks like we've seen the low in the interest rate cycle and it seems to be heading north now. Do you want to just sort of talk about um, APA's sort of exposure to those rising interest rates and whether it concerns you at all? Yeah, look, it it um, you know rising interest rates means rising interest costs, which on the face of it um, does concern us, but um, again, APA is a long-term business. Um, I'm not concerned about in our interest costs because I know what they are for, the, for you know, the, uh, a long time. Um, we, we, our uh, borrowings, our offshore borrowings are all um, swapped back into Aussie dollars uh, and they're fixed. Um, we tend to ride the, the, the cycle um, in, in respect of, of we've got our, our debts termed out for you know, up to 30 years. So any one particular year, I'm not concerned about what the interest, the cost of refinancing that is, because it's not a big chunk of debt in respect to the whole portfolio. Um, as to the cost, um, the interest costs will be what they, they are. And as interest costs um, rise, um, it just means that, um, you know, our, our, our uh, average te debt term is about eight years. So as every year goes past and we, we refinance some debt, at the prevailing interest rate, just just gets tacked on to the end of the average. So, um, you know, I'm not really too concerned about it. Yeah, is what it is. Well, Mick, thank you very much for that chat on your your business. But um, maybe just a bit more on a personal note. I mean, you're one of the, I would have thought the longest or one of the longest serving CEOs of uh, an ASX listed company now, uh, particularly in the infrastructure <laughs> space. I'm just uh, interested, uh, just you know, from a personal spot. What, what is what's your you know what, what's your reckon is your, your sort of key success factors over time? What's uh, what sort of driven your success? Oh, look, um, I think it, in, a, in a business sense, we've um, you know, we always try to keep things simple. Um, um, even for APA, the, the, the common thread is there is that it, um, it is simple, just not always easy. Um, we've had a, um, a very consistent focus strategy. Um, we've got the risk reward balance um, on average pretty, pretty right. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of hard work, and as I say, I often tell you, the harder I work, the luckier I get. <laughs> a bit of luck has, uh, has, has gone in there, but um, no, it's, it's uh, been a great, great um, business. Um, we've been lucky that we APA started and, and has pursued um, the growth. It's pursued in a growing market. 
you know, even notwithstanding the issues around the gas market today, the um, fact is a lot of gas in Australia and, and we believe the demand for that gas will continue to grow and, you know, most of it goes through our system so it's a good place to be operating a business from. And of course the people in the business, um, you know, we've got the Van Body, um, a long stretch of we've got the best, um, the best management people, team in the, in the country, in, in, in the industry, absolutely.